Hello, today we will talk about curves, what they are and what they represent. For us, a curve is going to be a continuous function from a real interval to the plane. A function of this kind can be interpreted in two different ways. We can think of this function representing the position of a particle through time, or we can think of this function as some abstract force that takes a real interval and puts it into the plane. Of course, one can always look at each coordinate independently and write our function as a pair of real functions of one real variable. The fact that the function gamma is continuous is reflected in the fact that both functions x of t and y of t are continuous. We sometimes call the image of gamma the curve and gamma the parametrization of the curve. At the end of the day, if you go out to the street and ask the first person you see what is a curve, the answer won't be, oh, obviously, a continuous function from a real interval into the plane. The first observation that we can make is that many different continuous functions have the same image. Here we have four particles tracing the same trajectory, but they behave very differently. So it will be desirable to have a criterion to tell if two parametrizations of the same curve are essentially the same or not. Imagine that we have two parametrizations of the same curve. We say that they are equivalent if there is a continuous monotone surjective function phi sending the domain of gamma 1 to the domain of gamma 2, satisfying that if we apply phi and then gamma 2, it is the same as applying gamma 1. If this happens, we say that gamma 1 and gamma 2 are reparametrizations of each other. For example, here we have three parametrizations of the same curve in the plane. The first two are equivalent to each other, while the third one is not equivalent to the other two. One of the main goals of differential geometry is to relate the algebraic and analytic properties of the functions x and y with the geometry of the curve. We say that the curve is differentiable if it has a parametrization for which x and y are differentiable. In the same spirit, we say that the curve is CK if it has a parametrization with both functions x and y of the form ck. Remember that ck means that they have derivatives of two order k and those derivatives are continuous. We say the same for smooth, where smooth means that all their derivatives exist. And we say that the curve is regular if there is a c1 parametrization whose derivative never vanishes. Let's see what is the meaning of these conditions. We're used to thinking that differentiable means that there are no spikes or cusps. Sadly, this is not the case for curves. Here we have an example of a smooth curve that looks pointy. By reducing its velocity to zero, a smooth curve can change its direction abruptly at a point. For curves, the condition that gives us nice pictures is regularity. Whenever we have a regular curve, we can always find a coordinate system in which it locally looks like the graph of a differentiable function. By a new coordinate system, we mean a pair of perpendicular lines that play the roles of the new x-axis and the new y-axis. This theorem can be proved easily using the inverse function theorem to construct such coordinate system, and it's a nice exercise. One of the most basic constructions one can make for curves is concatenation. Imagine that we have two curves, gamma 1 and gamma 2, such that gamma 2 begins exactly where gamma 1 ends. Then we can form the concatenation gamma 1 asterisk gamma 2 that consists of first traveling along gamma 1 and then along gamma 2. When both gamma 1 and gamma 2 are smooth, we say that the concatenation is piecewise smooth. Same for CK and regular. An important kind of curves are the ones that start and end at the same point. These curves are called closed. When we have a closed curve, we always have a periodic parametrization. That is, one that corresponds to a particle that travels along the curve over and over again. This is obtained by concatenating the curve with itself infinitely many times. If this periodic parametrization is CK, smooth or regular, we say that the curve is closed CK, closed smooth, or closed regular, respectively. A regular curve that is closed can fail to be a closed regular curve because it may fail to be regular at the base point, as this example shows. Let's introduce a little more terminology. 
we say that a curve is simple if it does not intersect itself. This happens precisely when it has an injective parametrization. However, when we are talking about closed curves, we say that a curve is simple if it only intersects itself when it comes back to its initial point. Simple closed curves have this special property that they separate the plane into pieces, the interior and the exterior. This is the content of the Jordan curve theorem, which may feel obvious at first, but is actually surprisingly hard to prove. Let's finish this lesson with a couple of technicalities. When we say that a continuous function on a closed interval is differentiable, it is because it is the restriction of a differentiable function defined on an open set containing the closed interval. The same of course applies for CK and smooth functions. Finally, we say that a curve is a smooth regular if it has a parametrization that is both smooth and regular. This is not the same as being both smooth and regular separately. Here's an example of a curve that is both smooth and regular, but feels to be smooth regular. It consists of a straight segment, followed by a piece of circle, and then another straight segment. We show here two particles. First, one following a smooth parametrization, and then one following a regular parametrization. However, we will see later that this curve does not admit a parametrization that is both smooth and regular. Now that we have covered all the relevant definitions and technicalities, we are ready to jump into the fun stuff like length and curvature.